Skull, skull, skull. You will die. This is that kiss by go. There, I said it. Happy now. Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is uh, Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. And this is That Gets My Goat. Okay. Uh, today we thought we'd talk a little bit about February. Ew, do we have to? It's such a lovely month. No, it's not. Filled with joy and happiness. None, none whatsoever. And snow. Okay. And I'll generally, generally cold temperatures. Although today it's it's pretty good, huh? It's nice. Out. Last we two had, days have been a, a respite. Yeah, we actually went for a walk outside, which is something we do often to uh, as a break between podcasting sessions. How far would you say we walked? Two point three miles, forty six minute walk. Says Google Maps. Yeah, but surely it took us longer than that because we were walking in darkness. That's possible. There is that spot where the road is no longer paved. And right at that same time, a sheriff's car came by as we were walking over that and used his little side light to shine it in our face and make well, sure... We a, weren't... he had his fudgeon brights on I to know. begin with, with a bright moon out. Uh, so he didn't need the the, the brights on. But, yeah. and, but then, yeah, he turned on his deer spotting light or whatever you, <laughs> you call it. Perp spotting, I guess. is Yeah, put it right in our face so then you can see even worse... It had been a wet day already with a fair amount of rain, and so there was a good good number of those potholes filled with water. So it did make it a little uh, difficult, but anyway, yeah, nice day. That was a little bit of a tangent, sidetrack. Well, yeah, yesterday was such a nice day that I actually rode my bike. The first time I ever would have ride, ridden a bike in February, except for living in Los Angeles, because... I lived in California, mm. and uh, I couldn't believe it. It's just the weather was so, so nice that I feel guilty. I feel like, oh, I'm going to have to pay for this. <laughs> kind of like somebody who, you know, eats a whole bag of M&Ms or whatever you normally do. And <laughs> then afterwards, it's like, oh, shoot, I'm going to pay for this. I'm going to have my feet amputated someday soon. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. You went a little darker than I was <laughs> intending. I mean... <laughs> But yeah, uh, that may be the case. We may be paying for this soon as the um, month wears on. But the reason I did want to talk about February was for other reasons than weather or even Valentine's Day, which I know is your favorite day of the year, but we're, gonna, we're not going to touch on it this time around. We are going to stick to the Dupo Rimo, which isn't really a thing. But I like to call it that just because way back when we once did a podcast, a special podcast month that we called Dupo Remo, which stood for Dune Steve. Dune Steve podcast releasing month or was it recording month? I, I think we kind of fudged it into releasing month because we actually recorded them all before February or most of them at least. But anyways, yeah, that's what we called it. And we did a, a podcast a day for an entire month. What did we um, talk about for a month, though? I don't recall. It's been so many years that I don't remember uh, what we may have said. But anyways, uh, right at the end of January, the most wonderful month. What? <laughs> uh, I was recording an episode of the Ankle Cast in which I had everybody send me comments about a story that I released on the podcast. And as part of recording this episode, I, I don't know, I got fired up or something. And uh, I rashly decided that I would commit to writing 500 words a day for the entirety of February. Because I figured, you know, like the Dupo Remo thing, it's the shortest month of the year. So at the very least, I get, you know, three days off. <laughs> I don't have to do quite as much. But, uh, you know, hopefully that's something that I can achieve. And it's something that I need to do, you know, way back when. I did that once before. Uh, in that case, it was October. And I picked that as the month that I would write every day. And I achieved it. And it was, and it's still one of those things that I look back at with, like, the most, I don't know, positive feelings or whatever as far as writing goes. I did a lot of stuff that month. I wrote some good stories. And I was, I was 
proud of myself when I finished. So I decided that it's time to get on the horse again. And I decided I'm just going to, I'm going to commit to it. I'm going to do it. We're going to do it all of February. And so I did that rashly on the uh, podcast and I put that podcast out. Then you listened to it and decided to join me. I think you had told me before you ever posted it that I've decided, I've mentioned in my podcast that I just recorded that I'm going to write every day in February. And so I don't know if I told you at the time, but I, yeah, once you told me that, I was like, okay, I will too. I don't know if that helps you have other, somebody else say they're doing it too. or And you're like, oh no, now there's pressure. <laughs> but now I have guilt. No, um, <laughs> there's competition. Yeah, I, I was like, why Why not? I, I, I That's right, mind. live a why not life. I like to write anyway. I've been doing it quite a bit in this new year of 2017. And so I was like, okay, every day in, in February. And yeah, I'm no fan of February. But there is one high point every February, and it's that writing conference that they have in my town. Oh, yes. and The Valentine's Day writing conference. The Valentine's Day massacre <laughs> slash writing conference. And... You know, I, I I go to it. Like this will be the third year in a row that I've I've gone to it, and I always get something out of it. Some kind of you know, just the rush of being around other people that are making it happen, or the creative people, or that this sort of thing is important to them, right? Because yeah, there's not a lot of people that write or that care, and, and you know, it's weird that we have a podcast where that's almost all we talk about. <laughs> but there's got to be somebody out there that feels the same way, and maybe they get inspiration from it and yeah this year I, I they've already put out the program and the case is always that there are a couple of hours where there's not really anything any panels that interest me it's like, be perfect oh. for lunchtime if it weren't um, 6 p.m yeah and then oh, wait, like immediately dinner. after there's a panel and at the same time there's another panel and at the same time there's another panel it's like i would go to any of these oh come on and I wish that I could like split myself into two or three and, <laughs> and go to all these panels or, you know, have somebody record it so I could listen. But yeah, there, there was one where the three panels at the same time are outline, question mark, discovery, question mark, both, which is about, you know, pantsing, pantsing and, versus uh, planning, planning, you know, which is right for you. At the same time, there is. Boring Beginnings, The Most Common Rookie Mistake. And this is an editor saying that he's rejected more stories for boring beginnings than anything else. So he wants to talk about the common pitfalls and how to avoid them. And at the same time, there's research for the fantasy writer. And mm. it's like real world research is a gold mine for fantasy writers. And it talks about things that, that can make your book shine, that can have a verisimilitude in your writing. And I was just like... I. Plus, there's like four other panels at that same hour. But these were the three where I was just like, okay. Oh, maybe we'll have to uh, split up on that hour and each take a recording device with us and share the files around. Because, yeah, you didn't go the first year that I went. And so I brought my little recorder and recorded most of the panels that I went to. And I don't know that that was useful for, to you, but for me... I stumbled across one of those just the, yesterday, and I listened to it, and I was like, wow, this has some good stuff, even though I was in that panel. <laughs> but you know, it's but a, you don't remember it. No. It's long gone from your memory. The thing that would be best is to have the panels that I don't go to get recorded, and the panels that I do <laughs> go to, I maybe I'll jot down a couple notes, but the one two years ago, I really got a shot in the arm. Of, you know, I'm going to write a novel this year kind of thing. And then, you I know, got a wow. shot in the heart from that. <laughs> and then, yeah, last year it was just like, oh, you know, I'm going to publish more of my stuff or some of the stuff that's just sitting on the shelf that I'm too cowardly to publish. I'm going to do that. And who knows what I'll hear this year. That just it, It's just it's partly intimidating to see people up there who have made it, who are just like, you know, I quit my job and I divorced my wife <laughs> because now I'm a full time writer. And then, you know, then there are other people that are just getting started. You know, there's always students that are at the panels in the audience that, you know, they're, they're, they're thinking about writing and that stuff. And so, you know, you can feel better than some people and worse than others. I, I don't know. But yeah, every year somebody says something where I was just like, Oh, I'm going to remember that. Shoot. What did he say? But yeah, so there's that, uh, coming up, which will help. But yeah, you decided to join me and you've, you've got the, uh, 
the stuff going on. You, it, for you, it was not really a thing because you were already doing it. For you, it was more, hey, I'll support you. I'll do that because I already do. Um, <laughs> yes, but, but then on it's top more of that, formal. It's more. Yeah, that's true. You know, I said I'd do it and I'm going to keep people updated on how well I'm doing it. And that's helpful to look at yourself and say, you know, I really only wrote 236 words the whole day today. Jeez, I, I, you know, I, I, I could do better than that. That you wouldn't otherwise do where you're just like, did I write? Yep, done. Sometimes it's nice, though, because my goal is to write 500 words. And there's been a few times where I finished the scene that I was writing. And I was like, okay, I'm done for today. And then I looked at the total and was like, oh, crap, that's only 430? Uh, uh, I'm like Batman on the part where she's like, I need you to be more enthusiastic. And he's just like... Ah, uh, fine. That's, yeah, that was my attitude to write those last 70 words. It's just like, oh, <laughs> come on. But I wound up writing like 150 words instead and, you know, being well over my limit because of that. But yeah, it's it's cool. And we're only, today's the 6th. Uh, we're recording this February 6th. So we're only five and a half days into it. But... But you've already finished a story. I did, yeah. I, I started just a silly little story. It wasn't meant to be anything huge or amazing or awesome or anything. It was just an idea that I thought, oh, this could make a nice flash piece or a relatively short story. Wait, wait sorry. What is a, the definition? Is there a word amount, a word restriction for a flash piece? Is flash just something that been made up in the podcast community. yeah i believe so i think it was uh, i think escape pod coined that term because uh, they wanted to have shows that were shorter than the the regular 30 minute you know normal episodes that they would do i think it's 2000 words or less but i'm not sure and this story turned out to be longer than that but not a hugely longer it turned out to be just around 3000 words so in 5 days I wrote about 600 words a day and came up with a 3,000-word story. But for people out there that aren't the hosts of the Dune Steve Audio Fiction magazine, a 3,000-word story takes 30 minutes to present. Yeah, that's probably so true. That's that's a full escape pod story. Yeah, I suppose so. And yeah, I don't know how good it is. I have a tendency to think my stuff sucks as I'm writing it. And then maybe later on I'll read it and go, well, this is... This is all right after all. I did that with several stories that I've written. And it's good because that gives me a little boost of self-esteem or whatever so that I, I want to, oh, I guess I'm actually good enough after all. I should get back at this. You have the opposite experience that I do. Like when I reach the end, it's this orgasmic feeling of accomplishment of holy cow i am the greatest look what i have created i feel and that way when i'm done taking a dump usually <laughs> but <laughs> it's funny i didn't steer the conversation in that direction he did but with you it's the opposite it's just like oh you know, okay, okay well i finished it but it's it's not very good uh, right sometimes i think they're good and there have been stories where I finish it and I'm like, oh, no, this is awesome. I am the greatest. And other times, like this, I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be anything special. It was just a kind of an offhand idea that I just got. And I maybe if I'd polished it for years, like I tend to do, running through it in my mind for way, way too long before ever even starting it. Then when I finally do it, I'm like, yes, I rule because I finally beat this story that has been... Banging around in my head forever, but if I get the idea and have the story written in like a week, then I don't know. It, it feels less like some kind of a monumental accomplishment. I guess I can understand that. If you've had an idea bouncing around in your head for a year or three and you finally get it on paper, you're just like, wow, you know, I'm not carrying that burden on my right. back anymore. But if you're just having a stream of consciousness idea that came into your head and you start writing it right then, yeah, maybe you don't feel like that's been with you for mm -hmm. a portion of your life. The other problem that I have is that I pledged to write 500 words every day. Uh-huh. And I finished that story. So now I've got to write 500 words on something else. So I need to 
have something else ready to go to get on to. That's a little thing that I'm worried about right now because I finished that yesterday. Today I have I still have to write my 500 words today. I think I'm going to work on this thing that I had almost finished a long time ago and then just for no good reason never went back to. Got like 95% of the way through it and then Jeez. stopped and completely forgot that it even existed for like at least a year. I figured I'd put my 500 words into that. But what I really need to do is go through the first two chapters that I wrote of Sunny and Gray and read those again and get myself back into that space because Sunny and Gray is supposed to be long so I could write 500 words on that for months probably and not be done. Having something like that that won't just suddenly be gone out from under me right away feels like a good thing right now. Well, yeah, you and I have just different ways that our brains work. My brain is like the conveyor belt in that I Love Lucy episode with the chocolates. <laughs> uh-huh. And here comes the story ideas down. And it's just like, well, I, I, I'm not done with this. Oh, shoot. I got to grab that one. And, and, and you look and three of them have already gone down and I didn't ever get them. And there's just a whole line of story ideas waiting mm-hmm. for their turn. And, and you start stuffing them in your mouth. And in my bra. Yeah. Mouth. It's just, I, I, what else can I do? <laughs> well, uh, to start with, you shouldn't wear a bra, probably. And yours I is... I probably need to, but you really don't have an excuse. Yours is like a conveyor belt at a an airport baggage claim. It where just it's keeps just going like, around and around. It'll, it'll be around. back. It'll come back. Just <laughs> just let it go. And then the conveyor belt will just stop, and it'll be sitting there, and then the next flight comes in, and then it's the same suitcase is still there, and it'll just start going around again. I guess. I mean, I haven't looked into your head. That, that's... So, well, that's the way it is. Uh, it just keeps going around forever. Yeah, I still have ideas, and I probably will never write them, because they're when it comes down to it, they're probably not really good ideas. I don't know. Maybe if I spent a lot of time working on them, they might be good. But I have ideas that I came up with in high school that, you know, I still know, more or less, how they're supposed to go. I have a whole series of fantasy novels called The Thing That Should Not Be that I wanted to write. And all of them based on Metallica song titles, all the uh, portions of the uh, story. Hero of the Day. And on top of that, also based on on the uh, Bard's Tale characters that me and my friend came up with in high school. And you still remember them. <laughs> I do, yeah. See, that's a, I that, spent that, a long that time thinking about them. That baggage claim is just, yeah, nobody's yeah, it, ever going to It's still it. spinning, yeah. That, that suitcase has got, like, dust on it and, like, all the things inside of it. Like, the clothes within that suitcase, they're rotten. They've turned to dust. And yet, the suitcase still keeps going around. It's amazing, that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I sometimes I wish I were like that. Like, the other day, I was... Looking for something to record. I was like, okay, I, I'm not tired. I need to record something, and and so I, I just started looking in folders, and there was or there was a file called Superhero Story, and I was like, well, that's vague. Let me double click on that. And <laughs> I, I hope read that's it. not the title I went with. And it was like three pages, like a beginning, a middle, and an end of like this superhero origin adventure story about a teenager who gets powers, and that, and I was just like, hi. I've, I've never heard of any of this in my life, but you know, there were these telltale signs that I had written it uh-huh. and I got to the end and I was just like, wow, that's amazing. How many decade ago? And I looked at it, it was from 2015. <laughs> that wasn't ages ago. Was like, and yeah, I took the effort of actually typing it up and then completely forgotten it. <laughs> but yeah, everybody is different. That's one thing that is uh, definitely true. Uh, Another thing that I thought was interesting about this whole deal is that I, 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 I'm assuming it's coming from a blog post that you put out about deciding to join me on this thing. Tom Tancredi saw that you were doing it and I was doing it and he said, I'll do it too. Mm. And uh, threw his hat into the ring as well. I think that's cool. Yeah, we should have made a big deal about it and said, everybody join Dupo Rimo. Yeah. Maybe we'll do it again next month and we'll make a big deal about that. I don't know. We'll see how this month goes. See if I'm if I'm still alive when it's over. Uh 
But is he next week? I'm going to be around all these people who write for a living and have just unbelievable worth work ethics and personal habits of how they do things and stuff. And so you will either kill yourself or be spurred into doing more. Well, yeah, that, I mean, you had talked about upping your word amount the next time we do it. You know, it's like, OK, I, I managed this many. Now I'm going to double it or, you know, some crazy thing like that. But there's always somebody at the writers conference that has some crazy schedule or whatever. You know, yeah, it's like, well, I mean, the my first... alarm goes off at 449 a.m. <laughs> every single day and I write until six and then I start the rest of my day. And I was just like, nope. <laughs> no, nope, not me. I'm not a writer. Then if that's what a writer is, nope. I'll go back to playing Nintendo games. Thank you very much. Well, the first year that you went to that conference, there was a guy who taught you how to write a book in three months. Then the next year when I joined you, there was a woman who taught us how to write a book in three days. Is that what it was? Or was it, it, was exactly was it a that. week? It was, it three, was days. three days. You booked yourself into a hotel room. You took like little 15 minute breaks eat and defecate okay. yeah you turned off your phone you didn't get on facebook you didn't have any contact with the outside world and you basically were supposed to write like 16 hours a day for all three days and just diarrhea that crap out and she said this will wreck you if you do this right by the last day you will just oh never want to write again you're just you'll be so mentally and physically exhausted Oh, but when you come out the other side, it's like a cleansing. It's like a full body enema. And yes, yeah, she's like sweating while she's talking about this. And, you know, her heart is just, you can actually see it palpitating. And she's like, she became so fervent that after that, she started picking up venomous snakes. And, and <laughs> they would bite her and she didn't She feel didn't it. even she care. Didn't even and then she's like, show of hands, brothers and sisters, <laughs> how many of you will do this? And I was just like, Hell no, I'm not raising my hand. I would like to try something like that. Maybe not a, a three-day thing like this woman has got her in her head, but, you know, a, a sequester your stel yourself and write this thing until you're done kind of a thing. I think I would have to build up to it, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, today I'm going to write for three hours straight and just do that for three hours. And then, okay, next week I'm going to write five hours straight, you know, and just build up to doing like a whole day and then just be like, okay, now we're going to a cabin in the woods and we are riding for a week or whatever and, you know, take the vacation and do that. I don't know. It, it seems like it would be awesome, but it, it would also be a terrible if you finished and you're like, well, shit, I wrote like three chapters <laughs> of the 24 I meant to write. I know, but that's still three chapters more than you currently have. <laughs> well, it's one thing to completely like use all your vacation for the year and come up empty handed. Oh, well, I guess so. <laughs> so I, it would be neat to try it once though as an experiment and see if that was actually worthwhile or not. Well, see, I have access to a cabin in the woods and I've never done it. I'd like to just say, okay. Every time you go Thursday, to the cabin in the woods, you just sacrifice the virgin and, I, I can't help and it. the you know, uh, jock. And... I just hope that it's going to be the merman this time. <laughs> but yeah, I, I could go there like on a Thursday and Friday or something and just, you know, say, okay, I'm going to do this. No internet, no television, no pants. I'm going to do this. And... No pants! Thank you. <laughs> but I, I don't do it because it's easier to... Not to do the things that are hard. <laughs> I know that that's what Confucius say. This is I'm, I'm throwing some real, some real some, ancient wisdom yeah, around here. Everybody, take out a pen. It's hard to do the things that are hard. It's easier not to do the things that are hard. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add that to my uh, inspirational medley on the uh, ankle cast. <laughs> okay. I know you're joking, but somebody somewhere would be like, yeah, it's easier not to do the things that are hard. Thank you, Rish. Uh, you changed my life. Buy my self-help book. Anybody know where my dealer is? <laughs> All right, someday I'm going to write a self-help book that says, what should, what should it be called? Come up with something that's apropos to me. You will die by your own hand <laughs> and soon. The Rish Outfield story. I've always would tell that story. I mean, I've told you a million times, but I tell anybody that a fortune teller <laughs> told me that, that he ended the fortune with you will die. He's like, he was like, you will never succeed. 
You will never keep a job. No one will ever love you. You will die by your own hand and soon. And soon. <laughs> That'll be $50. <laughs> so, you, you, but you've written five days in a row? Five days in a row. And I have made it over 500 words every time. And yeah, I'm not going to kick you in the taint. Even you though promised. I'm tempted to. You promised. But I <laughs> am fairly sure you didn't write five days at all in 2016. Maybe there were five days through the 365 days. Yeah, I did write one story. You wrote a story for our For the Christmas episode, episode, episode in 2016. But yeah, I, I bet it didn't take me five. I, th- I want to say it was a two-day affair. It was a, like a 1,000-word day and like a... 1500 word day and i was done pretty sure i didn't even spend a third day on on that story so and see that's really sad that year is basically your i spent all my vacation time and look what i i (laughs) did but you still have a a, a story in 2016 but the weird thing is you have a story in 2017 now you have a folder for 2017 yeah i didn't make a folder for 2016 until just barely more than a month ago and um but, yeah, 2016 was not my year. And I know a lot of people hated 2016 for various oh, reasons. Yeah. So did I. I had reasons that were different than probably everybody else. But you had all sorts of health problems. Exactly. That's You've had I'm a fascist about. dictator uh, election. <laughs> Your child is a monster. Your son got a job and he won't stop growing. <laughs> I'm farting. Oh, so 2017 is just as bad you're, as what oh, you're saying? Sorry, I could I could rephrase. <laughs> but now he's got a job; he can buy his own damn clothes. <laughs> no, no, no. Tell me why why 2016 was so bad for you? Was the uh, health stuff? Uh, health stuff and other issues. I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to bore people or chase them away or whatever. But yeah, it was not my year for various reasons, and. Um, I'm excited about 2017 because it's already been a better year than 2016. Well, yeah, we didn't lose any David Bowie's or Five-ish Finkel's in 2017. So So far, yeah. There was an impersonator, a David Bowie impersonator that I saw the other day that looked like he probably doesn't have long. It made me kind of sad. And I thought, F2017, I hashtagged it. (laughs) Anyways. um, But okay, sorry, I got to stop you though. You're, but you're not competing against me, and you're not competing against what you did in 2011 or anything like that. I mean, you you're, you you can't go back and f- fix the mistakes that you've made in the past or whatever. You're only competing oh, about I've got this. yourself right now in 2017, making right now the best that you can. I mean, you can promise that two months from now you're going to finish the gauntlet. But you can, I, mean, I don't know how you can affect two months from now. The only thing you can do is right now, is today. Exactly. Is say, I'm not going to go to bed till I've done my 500 words, 15, yeah. 15 and a half words. I did that one night, one of the nights. Oh, my gosh. I was so tired. And I couldn't write until the child went to sleep because he would, he's not going to let me. And, oh, I was so tired. And... uh yeah, I was I was sitting there trying to get him to sleep, and I was so so close to falling asleep myself, and I was struggling to stay awake. And then finally, he went to sleep, and I got up. and I don't know if that happens to you sometimes, where you're just so tired, and then you get through it, I guess, and then you can't sleep. You know, and then you're like up until two. But I managed. I struggled through it, despite being so tired. I still did it because I said I had to. I guess. This thing feels different than our little novel writing experiment that we did a year and a half ago, which was a gigantic failure for me. It feels not so much like I have to do it because other people will, I don't know, give me a hard time, will think poorly of me, will whatever. It doesn't feel like other people matter in this one. You know, I'm I'm competing against me, and that's it, you know, my... My better angel has to uh, conquer in this case. I have to fight off the demon on the other shoulder that's saying, Yeah, I go to bed. That's okay. You can just do a thousand words tomorrow and say you did 500 today. So far, I haven't get it given into that. But yeah, nobody is going to check your work either. True. You can say, oh, I did 614 words today, and it's a lie. And there's no consequences to that at all, except for that you didn't do it. 
And so, yeah, it's just, it's, it's impressive that you've managed for five days and uh, who knows, you know, two weeks from now, if we got together again, what you would have accomplished, how far you would have gotten in whatever you're choosing to write. I wish that I were disciplined enough to just say, you know, oh, I've got to finish this project that I'm working on right now so I can jump on this other project that I really want to. But you can only do so much. I, mm-hmm. I, sometimes, uh, last week, I drove to the library and I set my alarm on my phone for one hour. I was going to write for one hour. And yeah, like 20 minutes in, I was just like, well, I am at the library. I wonder what they have in this section or whatever. And there was nobody there to tell me not to do it. It just, uh, I was supposed to force myself to sit there and write for the hour and no librarian came over and said shh and get back to it well I blogged about it and I said you know I wanted to give one of the librarians the meanest looking librarian my car keys and said do not give these back to me until I hold up my notebook and it says the end on it <laughs> just just as an experiment it's just like okay I'm going to write through to the end kind of like we said with the cabin or with you know your hotel uh-huh. room or whatever and I could do that but i just never have i don't know it takes some kind of self-control some kind of mental discipline to just say no i'm gonna keep going and i guess next week i'll be around people that do it all the time and maybe i can ask them how they make themselves do it but they're gonna give me some answer that doesn't apply to me because you know everybody has their own maybe but maybe not maybe it will be something we're like oh yeah, why haven't I thought of that all this time? I could just do that. And then you put it in, and all of a sudden, it's like you strapped a rocket on your ass and you flew straight to the damn moon. <laughs> you never know. Could just be so inspiring, like the why not speech, where you just like came out of there going, Oh my gosh, I gotta call Big Anklevich. I know it's probably like past his bedtime and yeah, he's it was gonna 9 just wanna flip here. me off, but, but I gotta call him now and rant over the phone to him for at least an hour. <laughs> you never, never know. Well, somebody always says something that I need to hear. You never know. You know, that's, that's one of the reasons that people go to self-help seminars. Yeah, motivational seminars. I, I was trying not to say church. Because, you know, <laughs> they just want that. They, they, I don't know. They need some kind of word of encouragement or inspiration or, you know, just I just hope that somebody says something that I need to hear. And, and so I'm really looking forward to that thing next week. And. You know, every once in a while you go to a panel and you get absolutely nothing out of it. And the whole time you're thinking, I could have taken this hour and been writing. <laughs> but I, I remember I wrote a whole story during like a super boring panel uh, two years ago, I think. Well, it was, it was a few years ago during a panel that you showed me a little note that said, what if there was a Western story about this? And that is now your first published novel that you uh, put out called Into the Furnace. Available on Amazon and Audible. Go out and buy it. Now, it will change your life. It will make you fertile and (laughs) it will (laughs) fill you with vigor. What else can it do? Come on, (laughs) help me out with this commercial here. Increase the consistency of your urine stream. No, that's not Uh, so. Okay. That might be good for some people. Some dribblers. Add a a luster to their hair. There you go. And if you're Marshall Latham, it will add hair. Yeah, it will grow it right back. Grow back 10 years worth of hair loss reading this story. So go out and buy it now. (laughs) Just wait till the gauntlet comes out. (laughs) That 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 would be fun. We will prepare all sorts of (laughs) bullshit copy for that too, which which should be fun. I don't know. That's that's a challenge that remains a challenge for me is the self-promotion thing. The... The attitude of letting people know that they need to buy this or that they want to buy this or that, just that they might enjoy reading this. So you and I usually meet up at the local Target store. How, how do you pronounce that? I think you say Target. And I didn't know where you were. I later found out where you were and wished that I hadn't. <laughs> and so I just hung out in the book department, the book section. And I just started opening books, all of these books that are for sale, the hardcovers and reading the inside flaps. I probably read eight of them and like seven of the eight. I was like, oh, I'd read that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, this sounds really, really solid. And I know that it's somebody's job to write that copy. This probably wasn't the author herself that wrote the, the flap. 
the description blurb. or whatever. It's somebody's job to make it seem as dynamic, make it seem as ooh, engrossing, as make it seem as thrilling as possible. But I kind of wish I had that gift of saying, you know, this is the, the story that I have available for sale right now. It's called Remember the Future. And it's about this. And, oh, you, you'll be moved and you'll be excited. You be, might be a little scared. And it will leave your seat quite damp. Buy it. You know, I feel like a huckster when I'm doing that. I feel like a snake oil salesman saying, oh, it would put hair on hair the back of Masha Latham's back. Of his children's backs. Come right here. Cure all. You got the dysentery? You got the, the, the SIDS? The you got the <laughs> SARS? That's what I was looking for. You got SIDS, the SIDS? Well, SIDS too bad you're already very, dead very, very different. Sorry. Sorry, folks. But a little late on that one. You should have had this stuff last week. <laughs> it cures SIDS. But these people, are, they, they're, they're, they're that good at self-promotion. You know, there are a couple of people <laughs> on Facebook that you see their posts and, you know, they're pimping their product. They're promoting their product. Thank you. They're promoting their pernicious product. With platitudes. There's, yeah, yeah. And they do it really well. And I'm just like, wow, that's the fourth time I've seen him flog this particular book. But he never runs out of energy. And I, I would imagine that every time he posts it, somebody buys it. That's, uh, that's something that I, I should look for a panel that's about that. Pimping your Maybe. precious product. P- Perniciously. Mm. With platitudes and plain talk. And poopy. <laughs> Like, ooh, poopy. That's my subject. Could I be on the panel? Well, I don't I wonder if uh just reading a bunch of those blurbs and trying to take notes or at least see something about them that you know you can use. Well, see, you have to do that when you self publish on Amazon or right, Smash. You have to write, you have to write up a and they give you the option of a, a long description and a short one. And you have to do the short one, but if you choose, you can have a long description as well. And because usually I just publish short stories. A long description yeah. is the story. Yeah, well, a long description is more than <laughs> than I need. But yeah, that's something where you definitely... That's hard to know. It's it, We're not the consumers. We are the producers. But how important is the cover art? How important is the title? How important is the byline? It's like, oh, B.D. Eklovich, I'm going to buy that. And how important is that copy that you write, the blurb, the, the description, the summary that tells people what it is? And I'm... In my mind, that summary is more important than the name and the title and the cover. But I think the cover is probably what sells the most. I I don't know, though. The cover is what gets them in the door. The synopsis is what gets them to actually hit buy. And then the story itself is what gets them to come back. And then they find the byline. That becomes the most important thing, I think, afterwards. Because they're like, oh, yeah, Rich Outfield, I read that guy's other book, and it was good. I'll get this next one. I mean, if you look at my shelves over here, most of them are there because authors' names that are on them. Because I read one thing by that person, and then I was like, that's good, I'll read another thing. And that was good, and so I read another thing. And that's it's why I've got more than in one shelf completely full of Stephen King books. Uh, and Anne McCaffrey books, and so on and so forth. Piers Anthony, Anthony. books. I had a, <laughs> it's funny, because I got all those. I haven't read a, a Piers Anthony book in, you know, like 30 years. Not quite 30 years, but close to 30 years. So I wonder if I would still like them. <laughs> well, I hope so. I mean, you, you tried to buy everything that he's published. Yeah, I've got so much stuff suddenly. Because, yeah, we stumbled upon somebody who had just sold off their whole collection or given it all to the thrift store or whatever. That was cool. I liked that. I really liked thrift stores. But sorry, but going back to Target, when you came back from that dread place that you were, I said, oh, I've, you know, I've been here in the bookstore. And <laughs> you said, are you wishing that your name was on one of these books? And yeah, I did. I haven't read any of those books on the shelves, so I don't know that any of them are good or bad. I mean, I don't know that all these writers are better than me. Who's to say that I don't deserve to be there right there next to all these other people that write these YA books or books aimed at women that have girl in the title? <laughs> so it, I should. I should wish. I should long. You should go write in. YA. 
You actually do write YA. I know, I know you. Sometimes I just I yeah, I, I don't know what it, it. I don't know what the definitions of any of those things are. The same way that I didn't know what flash fiction was. It's just it's a word, but it, it's an empty word to me. Yeah, it's, I saw looking at this panel list that there's a panel about kid lit, and when I saw that, I was just like, isn't that just a, a, a term for a child, kid lit? Hey, kid lit, get on my lap. I know I'm not related to you, but I guess it's short for kid literature. Or maybe it's not. It's just, maybe it's a subgenre like YA, middle grade YA, and kid lit. Yeah, I mean, YA is basically just stories about young adults, stories about teenagers, and so much of your stuff is about teenagers. If you just started putting it out and calling it YA, oh, you'd just be rolling in it, man. That's all you got to do is put YA on your book and boom, like money rains from the sky. It's amazing. Well, then I need to get past my <laughs> prejudice against white people. No, against the term YA because, you know, money raining from the sky seems kind of nice. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to try that. Yeah, the, the closest I've come is bacon raining from the sky. I just cooked a bunch of it and threw it up in the air and said, yo, I'm going to make it rain all up in the air. I remember the grease landed on your children. <laughs> Unfortunately, not it, was, pleasant. it was still really hot. It wasn't a wise idea, but that's why we got emergency rooms. That's what they're for. They got a fun ride in an ambulance. Yeah, you know, yeah. Good stay at the burn ward. <laughs> Everybody likes that. We're, are we still on topic? No, this, this is <laughs> the end. Yes, I, I don't know. I'd like us to get together in a couple of weeks and talk about how it went and, you know, what did you write and how far did you get and would you do this again? Are you going to do this again? And, and stuff like that. But for now, I think we've said what we need to say. The entire purpose behind this thing for myself is just to get in the habit. They talk about, and I think it's a load of shite, but you've heard, everybody's heard the thing where you just have to do something for so many days and then it becomes a habit. Then you just have to not do that thing for one day and it's no longer a habit. Unless it's a bad habit. And then, yeah, you, you have to not do it for 20 years and then it'll finally stop being a habit. I guess that's the way habits work. But uh, I'm just kind of working towards that. The last time that I did it was years ago now, but I did it because the month before I had done kind of this, I was doing CrossFit and I had to do this crazy, my trainer decided to get me to do this crazy diet for one month and it sucked. I mean, I only ate like rabbit food and, you know, good for you stuff. It was so dull. I remember he told you to throw your bacon just up in the air. Yeah, I, I wasn't able to eat it. it, just throw it. So I made a rain all up in here. And yeah, it was so dull. But at the end of the month, I'd lost like 15 pounds. And I was just like, you know, if I can do that, why don't I commit to writing every day for a month? So I went straight into it with some vigor and I did it for a whole month. And ever since then, I've looked back on that and thought, Oh, it was, such, it was a perfect chance and I blew it. I could have just said, okay, I did it for a month. Now let's see if I can do it for two. You know, those that day is gone. My chance to do that is over. I blew that chance, but today's the starting day. I can, I can do it again. I've got a month that I'm going to do it now. And when this month comes to an end, this time around I can do it differently. I can just say, hey, no, okay, now it's March. What can I do in March? And that's my purpose, is to just turn my lazy habits into good habits. To start on a different trajectory. And I'm hoping that this will work out. It's funny because when I get into this kind of a mode, I feel like fixing everything all at once. So I'm like, oh, okay, now I need to start doing yoga every day. And now I need to start running also every day. I'm trying to fight that urge. <laughs> Because what that'll do instead is quickly make me burn out and be unable to do any of the things every day. So I'm going to stick with the one thing, and it's going to be the important thing, and that's the thing that I'm going to work on. And it's going to be writing every day for a month, 500 words, and possibly next month I'll up it, 750, 1,000. I don't know. We'll see what I can achieve this month, and then 
I can dream at what I might be able to achieve next month if I take it further. But yeah, that's what I'm uh, I'm looking to do, what I'm looking to get out of it. We'll see how it goes. Doing a whole show about it. I don't know, it feels kind of premature, but I guess we can do a second show about it when it's over. That's the... Uh, the autopsy of the whole event. <laughs> okay. <laughs> find out why it died. I mean, find out how it went. There's a, a better word than autopsy, but that's the one that came to mind. I'm sorry. Postmortem is what <laughs> you're looking for. <laughs> it probably is, which very it's, it's the same, the same thing, thing. But it's just a prettier word. <laughs> All right. Well, this brings us to the end of the episode, but I think we will do a follow up and let you know how it goes, and maybe set new goals for that that time as well and uh, so i will leave you i've been rich outfield don't dream it be it and i've been big anklevich dreams don't come true dreams are made true that gets my goat is produced under a creative commons 3.0 license doesn't have to be but it is not available in wisconsin <laughs> uh, we're recording this February 6th So we're only five and a half days into it It's two minutes before the 7th though So we might as well just say it's the 7th <laughs> I suppose so But I don't count it that way I count days kind of in like the Jewish fashion Where you know they go sunset to sunset I believe But uh, for me it's when I wake up, that's when the day starts. Mm -hmm. And when you go to so, sleep, the day ends. Right. So if I'm still up writing at 4 a.m. on February 7th, well, that's those are uh, count words for, the for February 6th. Yeah, I'm so. the same way. That's, that's right. It's like, what was that one that you went to where you thought? It was Paranormal Romance. Was it Paranormal Romance? No, it was Fantasy oh, It was romance. something what? about a, a alien, like a... It was a... A love interest that was not human or no, something it says like non -human that? No, non-human romance? Something like that. I, I think that's what it exactly. was. Not... And you had this idea that it would be a something, and it turned out that it was like a full-on like subgenre. Yeah, I, it was non-human romance as the genre. I just thought that that was like the subject that they were going to talk about, you know, as a woman that falls in love with a, a merman and, and a, a man that falls in love with a Volkswagen bug. And... A child that falls in love with a snow shovel. Um, <laughs> but it turned out it was all about romance novels. In which were, women get it on with... Minotaurs, yes, dinosaurs. I was going to say Gorgon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> dinosaurs. No, I'm, I'm not kidding. That They brought that up. <laughs> they talked about that. They, they were saying, you know, this stuff sells like you wouldn't believe. You know, it's like a, a, Fantastic bestiality, they call it. Oh, hey, that's really clever. And, and where, where to find to it. it. <laughs> but yeah, people, it's like women getting it on with Bigfoot. And it's like, how many of you would r read that? And I was looking around. And I was like, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> Why aren't you raising your hands? Oh, that was like me, quite the opposite. I was looking around and, and yeah, then they all turned as one, realizing that I didn't belong here. And they all went <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get anything. Out. Join us. I didn't, I didn't like that particular panel, but that's just me. Holy yeah, you shit, were okay, trying to you were trying to get me to go to that panel because you're like, oh, you have that alien love story. Oh, and you and the have one this, where the guy this story of the guy that loves the ghost, and you have this one about the, the guy. Fairy. Yeah, yeah, and I was just like, you know what? That's really weird, but yeah, all my stories are you kind used of to like talk this. about that. It was you that that told me paranormal romance is what I'm really working on right now and this was nine years ago you'd said that <laughs> i'm not kidding that was just during that time when twilight was a big big deal and just any girl falling in love with something that wasn't a dude was all the rage and he's like i can do that i, I can be a jedi ben tell him i'm <laughs> That's not true. That's impossible. All right, let's give it a shot.